Hey, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use actual libraries. Now, if you don't know what it is, it's it might come in handy when let's say if you're um, just starting out with Axure or you want to prototype something really quickly and you can use predefined components. So if you know if Axure default libraries right here on the left hand side, you have all these components, which let's say, I don't know, inline frame, let's say, which is predefined uh, type of behavior repeaters and let's say you can also add like a table you know so it's all predefined for you and this is not the full extent of what you can achieve with actual libraries at this point i have only the default ones which are installed uh, with Axure. as you can see we have some icons let's say some all the other bs but the best bit is that you can actually download third-party libraries and pre-install it in Axure to use later and right off the bat, if you want to do that, if you would go to Google and uh, search something like Axure libraries, you can get quite a few different bits here and there and a lot of different third party developers who are doing Axure libraries. In this video, I'm going to show you just three ones. It's readily available for you to download immediately after a video. As you can see, if you go to Axure.com, you can find quite a few different libraries. And the ones which are costly are marked with a dollar sign. But for example, this one, let me open it in a new tab. Uh, it's free. Let's see what else is free here. Um, like for example, this one, as you can see, it's kind of like a predefined component and you can define your own if you wish. I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and just, you know, open all the ones. Oh, you see font awesome icon library, Google material icons. That's great. A lot of different icons, UI kits superb so you don't have to design it from scratch uh, iPhone UI elements if I were you I would look for something which has already dynamic ones so you have some sort of behavior predefined so you don't have to reinvent the wheel but in reality uh, if you go for free ones it's really unlikely that you're gonna have libraries which are basically fully functional you probably want to have to invest some money but i opened quite a few now so i'm gonna go ahead and just try to download all of them and see how we can implement it next and so i downloaded quite as you can see a handful of them i have some icons i have some uh, design systems in place and i have some potentially interactive bits here and there. Once you do that, you're gonna get like RPLib type of files, which you can open only if Axure because it's purely a container for libraries uh, to contain the patterns for Axure. Um, but to install them, it's as quick as let's say double click it and you can all, all open it. And Axure is gonna ask you if you want to add this widget library and you can move it to let's say application directory, which I would recommend to do. Uh, because just in case you want to delete, uh, you're going to delete the library, it's just not going to be there. So if you can move it, it's going to be great. And so I'm going to do that for all of them. And once you've done it with installing the libraries, all you can do is basically you can open all the libraries at once in that panel. Or I would just recommend to use them as you please and as you need. As you can see, my libraries are here. For example, iOS library bar and all the components appear and I have all the structures other bits, but you kind of get can get lost within it. So I'm just, I like to jump from one bit to another. So let's say, oh, I installed two libraries for iOS 7. But let's say if I open that library, I can drag in the phone screen. I can drag in the icons. I can drag in, you know, all the pre-made bits so I don't have to, let's say, recreate the iOS 7 uh, look and feel. Again, none of this is really functional. As you can see, it's only the images which are here, but it doesn't mean you can't make it functional. So this library, let's say, provides you with an ability to, as you can see, it shapes, but it provides you with an ability to edit it and make it, you know, interactive. So it's kind of like a snapshot of a design system. Now you can find, as I said before, the libraries which are actually interactive and we already have pre-made, but really simple, basic interactions. But I would still recommend to just explore and see exactly what you can do. But as you can see here, I have Android look and feel type of things. And as you can see, there's plenty of items in this design library, let's say for material design. I can just drag in, drag and, and, and drop it into my uh, artboard and then use it as I please. Um, I can just perhaps even attach, you know, new interactions to that icon and make something happen. So it just, it's a basic 
built-in functionality which allows you to speed up your process a little bit. And let me just actually look through others. As you can see, this is some icon font-based thing and I don't probably don't have the font installed. That's why it's question marks. And I have something about iOS 8. And as you can see, this is already a dynamic panel. So someone made a dynamic panel out of it, which is great. So, you know, you're gonna experience a lot of different type of design systems expressed in that. Uh, oh, this is a good example. As you can see, this one has action because it has a lightning bolt. And as you can see, it says Boolean to next trap, meaning I think it's gonna be a toggle. Let me just preview it. Yeah, as you can see, this, for example, library has a functional toggle. So you can just drag in and, you know, into your artboard and then have almost functional prototype. If you can attach some other, other statements, let's say what happens when you toggle it while you have your own rapid prototype and, and, and done so rapidly. So I would recommend to explore and see exactly what you can make of it. Um, again, it's hard to understand if it's functional until you drag it in. Um, so you would have to go for each element in your libraries you install. There is just basically infinite possibilities of what you can do with, uh, you know, your libraries and, and how you can kind of kickstart a prototyping effort. Now, generally speaking, the paid libraries are the most extensive and most advanced and they usually have the most interactive bits. And, you know, so if you're thinking if it's worth 20 bucks, I first would see if it has interactions. If it does, I think it's a no brainer because it can save you hours and hours of time, especially if that function is already captured, which you want to make and you're not sure how to make. So go ahead and explore. I hope this video is helpful. I hope you found something new right now because libraries is usually overlooked by, you know, most of the designers, especially if you're starting a factory. As usual, like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below if you want me to cover something specific or you don't know how to do something, and I'll see you next time.